Dice Tower Tonight, episode 68. Hashtag winning! Welcome to Dice Tower Tonight, a video cast about board games and card games, and especially the people who play them. On tonight's show, how do you define victory? Crystal and I discuss our favorite victory conditions in games. Plus, I bring back one of my favorite trivia games for the show, we discuss some games we've played lately, and we answer questions from the audience live. I'm Eric Summerer, and joining me now, the seer to my werewolf, Crystal Pisano. Ooh, okay. So I, I, I'm reading a book right now that's not technically about werewolves, but it is about, like, shapeshifters who turn into wolf-like beasts, and the temptation to, to slip into the everyone, close your eyes, voice is strong. <laughs> I imagine that it is, it is an ever-present voice that just lives in the back of your head and likes to pop out occasionally. Yeah, occasionally. I, 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 there have been other books that um, I've... You know, I, I do some sort of, you know, suave, deep voice, and it ends up sounding like that. And it's especially bad when somebody says something along the lines of close your eyes in that voice. And then it really, it's hard to get away from that. Uh, someone in the chat said, holy echo crystal. Holy echo crystal. You know why? Watch this. I fixed it. Okay, I'll talk now. It's, it's because I was doing something with the board earlier, and I don't hear it in my headphones, but I bet they heard it in the chat. So... Crystal, you should be all set. I apologize. Perfect. Hey, yes. no worries. Um, I think, that, uh, yeah, hopefully it should be addressed now. I, okay, I good. So. Okay, somebody in the chat also mentioned something that I've been hearing. That there's a little like pip sound that keeps happening, like, and I was noticing it too, but I didn't know if it was coming from my computer. <laughs> a little pip sound. Yeah, like pip. Like it's oh. just. It's, you know what it was. I know huh. what it was. It stopped now, didn't it? I mean, I haven't heard it in a little while, yeah. I, I bet it did. You know why? It's because um, it's the sound of the chat. Every time the chat went, it makes a noise. And because I had this computer's audio going through the board, I figured it out. We're good. It's it's good. Uh, yes. Hi, chat. Everything hi. is fine. Crystal, how are you holding up? I'm feeling a little frazzled. You know... I would say similar. Um, it's it is such a weird place for everyone to collectively be experiencing something like this. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's lots of sad moments and mad moments and confused moments and I don't know what day of the week it is moments and everyone's experiencing those. And I think I've gotten to a good place in that I am allowing myself to feel whatever emotions I need to feel. And I'm, I'm those feelings are legitimate, regardless of what everybody else is experiencing. And I think that's something that's important to note is you don't want to compare your experiences to other people's experiences. Yes, other people have it worse, but that doesn't delegitimize what you're feeling and experiencing. So that has been good for me yeah. to realize and just yeah, so uh, honestly, the streams here on the Dice Tower have been lovely and helpful. Um, connecting with people like you is always are, is always a good thing for me. Um, and then the streams I did this past weekend here on the Dice Tower where I played Forgotten Waters yes. were just so much fun, Eric. I need to hear about this game uh, because I, uh, I, I, I'm I very anxious. Tom has said he really enjoyed this game. I have not had the chance to play this game yet. I would love to hear about Forgotten Waters, Crystal. Tell me. Tell me more. All right. So um, for those of you who did not watch my live streams, they are here on the Dice Tower if you go back in the YouTube history. Um, there's a part one and a part two. So on Saturday, I played through the first half of the first scenario. And then there's a save point in that scenario where you can stop playing and save the game if you want. Um, at that point, rather than saving the game, I left it set up on my table and then came back the next morning and finished it on a second stream. So Forgotten Waters is the new crossroad, Crossroads game from Plaid Hat Games. So if you've played something like Dead of Winter, same line of games for this one. Um, and I really like Dead of Winter and I really enjoy the Crossroads system. Um, and I've been really looking forward to more Crossroads games. So I was really excited about this one, even though I typically do not gravitate toward games with a pirate theme. 
But this one, there were enough good boxes checked on it for me that I was like, well, I don't care if it's a pirate theme or whatever, I'm going to play it anyway. So it is normally a three to seven player game, similar to Dead of Winter. Um, but the designer does have a, an official solo and two player variant. Um, and those variants are listed as part of the web app that you use to play the game. Um, you can also download the PDFs from Board Game Geek, which is what I did. Um, and so I have the solo and two player rules printed out as a reference. I still messed up a couple of rules, but I fixed them later. So in Forgotten Waters, you are literally pirates on a pirate ship going on adventures. Um, all, all of the players take on different roles and depending on the number of players, some players may have to take on multiple roles. Um, there are seven different roles in total. You have the ship scribe who is keeping track of things on this piece of paper, the gunner who controls the ship's cannons, the lookout who manages the threat track, the cooper who manages your supplies, the boatswain who uh, manages the ship's health, the first mate who manages the size of the crew and their discontent level, and the quartermaster, which manages the infamy track. Uh, obviously, since I was playing this solo, I took on all of those roles, and it was not too difficult to manage. In fact, I actually wow. think they might be kind of boring if you were playing with seven and you only had one of these things to deal with. Like, okay, okay this turn I had to add a token to my track, and that's it. So <laughs> I actually think the roles specifically aren't that exciting. What is exciting is how you actually play the game. There is a board, it's actually reasonably small for a game like this that seems so big and epic in story, and there's these tiles that go onto it that have numbers on them. The numbers are things that you will type into the web app to uncover pieces of the story. Um, you're gonna have a boat that's gonna be moving around on the board and you'll discover new tiles as you travel and you can even scout ahead and discover tiles, but those tiles may go away before you can get to them depending on how far you scouted because at certain points in the game, it'll tell you to clear tiles, which makes sense. It works thematically like, okay, I scouted ahead two spaces and I see that there's a ship over there with a number on it. Well, but if that ship might disappear if I take too long to get there because it would keep sailing. Yeah. Um, so you would you would type those things into the app to see what your adventure is. Grab the book. Um, and each round you're taking actions, and I'll find like a pretty generic page here. Yeah, the first one's pretty generic. There are no spoilers in what I'm about to show you, really, and you won't be able to read the small text anyway. But there's a whole bunch of pages in this book. Um, they show you the picture of what, where you're at, and then they show you all the actions that are available where you're at. So right now at the open sea, you have to feed your crew, you have to chart a course, you can fish, you can ready your cannons, you can talk to the crew, go to the captain's quarters, and sail. If it has an exclamation mark next to it, you have to do that action. If it's got a blue icon, only one person can go to that action. And if you have the green icon, any number of players can go there. What makes this interesting is when you open the page, you set a you have 40 seconds to decide all of the actions you're taking. Wow. And you do not get to read the text over here while you're doing that. Now, obviously, somebody could cheat and read it. But generally, you're just supposed to use these icons and the names of the actions to determine what you're going to do. Huh. So you kind of have to guess at what might happen. Then, after everyone's chosen their actions, the timed part ends, and you go through top to bottom, completing all of the actions. Um, Obviously, those actions will help out with those tracks I showed you earlier. You could gain supplies. You could repair the hull. You might encounter a cool thing that will allow you to draw treasure. Um, you might uncover more parts of the story. The captain's quarters, for instance, is one of the things that's on your ship's log, which I put over here. So you mark off things on the sheet. They'll have numbers next to them. You type the numbers into the web app, and then it will tell you the next part of the story. And the web app has voice narration for some of the scenarios, including the first one. So you can click the play button every time you type a number in and it will read you with voice acting. And so good, so good. I just, I cannot tell you. Eric, did you get tapped to do any of this at all? I did not. I am not part of the cast for this one. Okay, because I, I do know at least one member of the Dice Tower read like a line or two of dialogue for a one-off character in this, okay. but I I won't say who in case that's not supposed to be public knowledge, but <laughs> I, I <don't laughs> just in case. 
Yeah, uh, I would. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's probably not a big deal, but regardless, um, there are a bunch of ways you can lose the game. Um, there's a threat track, and if you mark off the last thing there, you lose. Um, each scenario probably has a specific lose condition, at least the first one did. Um, and there are a couple other lose conditions based on those tracks. Like if your discontent and crew markers ever meet, or if your ship's hull gets down to zero, your ship is destroyed. Um, I, first off, I don't play games solo that often. Secondly, I tend to not enjoy pirate themed games. I was absolutely blown away by how much fun this game is. It's going to be one of those games, I think, that's going to get a lot of hype as people start receiving their copies. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's warranted, like truly. And I honestly am really excited to try it with more players. And that's not to diminish the solo experience because the solo experience was really fun too. Um, I think it was especially fun for me because I was engaging with the chat here on the Dice Tower and they were helping me make some of the decisions. And that was really interesting. Um, I, I can't say enough wonderful things about it. Uh, I did get some feedback from people that they would like to see me stream it more, but I will say that the scenarios do kind of have some spoilers in them. So people who watch my live stream from this past weekend, you will see a couple of story beats that now if you were to play the game, you would have a tiny bit of an edge, but it's not so bad as to like guarantee that you wouldn't be want to play through that first scenario. Um, in fact, someone in the chat actually said that they've played through the first scenario four times already and have wow. enjoyed it immensely every single time. It's there's a lot of um, oh yeah, I'm somebody in the chat mentioned something that I haven't uh, shown you all yet that I'll bring up in a second. Um, it's those just those crossroads events that happen throughout the game when you type in numbers, they're not the same every time. Just like in Dead of Winter, you just, you know, get a random thing. Huh. And so the the story beats that you're going to encounter change when you play it over and over again. And what someone pointed out that I haven't shown you all is the character sheets, which I had mine. Oh, where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Each character gets their own character sheet. And this is actually how the win conditions work in the game. I know I'm describing way more than I usually do, but I'm so excited. <laughs> um, so everybody has to complete the scenario, obviously, but each individual player has a win condition based on their constellation on the front of their character sheet. You have to fill in the stars on your constellation, and those will trigger constellation events. And you have to trigger at least four of your five constellation events throughout the course of the game to have been considered to win once you complete the scenario. So what's interesting is there is no traitor in this game, at least as far as I know at this point, yeah. um, having played the first scenario. There's no traitor mechanism, but you might want to divert from the main goal or objective if you need more time to complete your objective. So I think it's actually a nice balance and a little bit different than Dead of Winter in a good way, in that no one is trying to sabotage the main objective. Again, as far as I know, future scenarios, I obviously have no information about. Um, no one's trying to sabotage it, but you may be like, okay, well, we don't really want to go to that thing now because we still have to do this. So it kind of just adds a little bit of dissent, which thematically feels right for pirates too. Now, pirates aren't all going to just be like nice and friendly and <laughs> helping each other the whole time, right? I'm not a very good pirate. I was very nice and friendly to almost everyone I <laughs> encountered <laughs> unsurprisingly um but yeah so you've got stats you've got constellations you've got constellation events you've got mad libs mad libs mad libs on your character sheet you have a little uh, backstory that's mad lib based and the chat helped me fill mine in i shouldn't talk this long about anything <laughs> it's just too much really but if anyone is curious i think if you were to watch my uh the playback of my uh playing through the first scenario, you're not going to get a ton of spoilers. And if you're interested in the game, it's worth it. Uh, and I just had a lot of fun with it. So I hope more people discover it and then pick, pick up the game as a result. And uh, I purchased this game with my own money. This was not a, even a review copy. Plaid Hat didn't ask me to do this. Uh, it's, it's all me. So uh, <laughs> I know sometimes people question that kind of stuff, but yeah. I, uh, I paid for this game and I am very happy I did. 
That is very, very cool. Uh, yeah. I, I, I need to play this game because it sounds like it's totally up my alley and uh, I would love to have this adventure and uh, and try it out. Uh, so now that's, that's... I can't think of... Yeah, I can't think of who I wouldn't recommend it to, honestly. Uh, yeah, yeah, it looks so pretty. Um, so my my game to talk about is going to be uh, less enthusiastic. Um, in fact, this is <laughs> this is less a review and more of a rant. So let's just get to it. I do um, love a good Eric rant. Oh boy! So the game I'm going to talk about is called Ask Me Anything: The Ultimate Social Game. Uh, now this is a party game, as you might uh, be able to tell from just the style of game. Um, but when you see a box that is this black, this dark, and it's a party game, what's the first thing you think of? Dirty stuff? Yeah. So <laughs> this has, let's get it to the correct corner, ages 17 plus in the corner of the box. So this oh, is definitely this is definitely one of those that strays into more risque territory. So I have, in, in the descriptions I'm about to talk about, I've curated a little bit to avoid the ones that might be, let's say, more extreme. Ask Me Anything is a, um, it's really a conversation starter style of game. Um, and here's your, your whole tray of, of cards, card decks. Um, and those those paper bands, I usually just toss those things away, but don't do that if you have this game, because it's the only way to get the decks out of the box. Because if you... If you um, if I, you're to take this out of the, the little strap it's in and put the, the cards into this little well, you wouldn't be able to get them back out again. I had to... I made that mistake, and I had to, like, pry them out. So anyway, that's that's not that big a deal. And the card quality is pretty cruddy, but that's fine. That's fine. So there's five different decks. Five different decks in the game. And there are different styles of questions that, that you might want to ask. So um, just as some examples, there's story time, which they call, let the cat out of the bag. What are your secrets? Something like, what is your favorite smell? So just for the heck of it, what is your favorite smell, Crystal? I'd say coffee. I like um, an amusement park just in the very beginning of the day after they've sprayed down all of the sidewalks. And it's just about I to actually, open. like, uh, uh, amusement park asphalt is a very pleasant smell for me as well. Even though it's not a good smell, it's, like, nostalgic in a fun way. Uh, so then, yay or nay is another category. They say, have you done it? What's your opinion? And they say, do people say you look like someone famous? Who is it? Uh, no, generally not. Although at one point, somebody compared me to like a bit role in the movie What Women Want, like Mel Gibson's secretary in that huh. movie. And I, I watched it and I was like, I don't think I look like her at all. <laughs> but that's the only one I've heard. I, I heard, you know, maybe like 10, 20 years ago, I heard Val Kilmer uh, a lot. I can see that. And I, I never saw it, but my wife makes fun of me because I keep saying, somebody said I look like Val Kilmer, but I don't see it. Um, choices. They say, <laughs> we're checking what your morals are! Exclamation point. So, th I, if you could live in any fictional world, where would it be? And I think we might actually have the same answer for this, Crystal. I mean, it's Star Trek, obviously. <laughs> yes. Yes, I love the utopia of Star Trek. Mm -hmm. uh, the lesser evil. This is basically the would you rather type question. In fact, they actually say our take on a would you rather. So, would you rather be the best player on a horrible team or the worst player on a great team? Ooh. I would rather be the best player on a horrible team. Hmm. I struggle with that one. I, I I feel like my gut answer was I'd rather be the worst on the best team than the team is doing well. As long as I'm not, like, cut from the team because I'm terrible. Like, if I still get to be on the team, then the team does well, even though I'm not doing that great. But I think if I have to be honest, I probably want to be the big fish in the small pond. Honestly, for me, it's not because I want to be the best. It's because I don't want to be the worst if that mm. makes sense. Like, I, I don't care about being the best. I just, I would feel 
some self like doubt and like feel bad about being the worst at something that's worse for me than the pressure of being the best, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and then the last category is just WWYD, which is what would you do? Um, stuff like if someone came up to you and said, Hey, do that thing you do. What thing would you do? I would sing white and nerdy by weird Al Yankovic, I guess. <laughs> Because I can do that from memory without yeah. the words in front of me. <laughs> I think I'd probably do it like a dumb prospector dance where I'd stand up and. I can also reach my entire back with one of my arms. Like, wow. it, you know that thing, like, people are like, oh, I have an itch I can't scratch. I'm not flexible in any other way, but with this arm, I can reach. I, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I don't know if I'll be able to show this on camera, but like, so this arm, I can't do anything at, at all. Yeah. But this arm, I can like go all the way up, like basically. So. Congratulations. Yeah. So I can scratch my whole back. And that, I guess, is a thing. <laughs> so, I don't know how that looked on camera. <laughs> uh, we could see it. It, it was there. Uh, so those are interesting questions and, and basically icebreakers and conversation starters. And so. In, in looking at this game, I thought maybe we could play this in some way uh, with, with you know, here on the stream. And it, it might be interesting. But I, I didn't notice I haven't gotten into any rules of the game. So uh, this is the rule sheet. Huh. One card. In fact, the back of the card is the descriptions of all the things I just talked about. So it's only this. Step one. Everyone grab a drink. Yeah. Okay, I got, I got my water. Yeah. So here's the game. Somebody, wow, I dropped it. Somebody is holding this, and they're the questioner. And you start a is timer. Is like the Riddler? <laughs> yeah, you're the Riddler. Uh, and you start a timer, and then somebody else is being asked questions. And they say, well, give me the WWYD deck. And you get to Mama ask a question. Said Jay. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, you get to choose the deck, uh, and then they the questioner asks the question, and you have to either answer or take a drink. And then the huh. timer runs out, and you give this to someone else, and you ask somebody else questions, and that is it. That is all. It doesn't say. It doesn't say how you win the game. It doesn't like. I mean, I would assume that if you've consumed enough adult beverages. A, you don't care, or B, you're asleep now. <laughs> and that is, I think that's it. That is the whole game. <sighs> so, like, the questions were interesting, at least the ones I filtered. I looked through some of the others, and they are definitely 17 plus. But they are interesting. <laughs> and co good conversation starters, and, and kind of cool. But there's no game in there. And that drove me nuts. So anyway. Yeah, when I was in college, I actually played loaded questions with my friends when we were consuming adult beverages. And I feel like the idea of that game was similar. I think there were maybe a few mildly risque questions, but I don't remember it being super dirty. <laughs> Kabuki says, we all hate you now, Eric. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's called Ask Me Anything. If if that's the sort of thing you're excited about, like let's have a, a crazy evening where we all sip our adult beverages and basically play truth or dare with interesting questions, that is this game. It is not something that I'm excited about playing on the stream, which is why <laughs> see, we have a flow to tonight's episode. Yeah, we so, do. rant over, we're going to play a game that I actually do enjoy at asking questions and actually has a victory condition. And let me get... They, they wrote me a note. We hope you enjoy our game. No. No. <laughs> we're going to oh. play Bezer Wizard. Because Yay! That, that's a game. That's okay. a good game. So, pardon me for a moment. I must take the webcam down here. Hi, Lego Voltron. And let's see what we got. That's kind of, sort of, going to work. Yeah. All right. So, in Bezer Wizard, Bezer Wizard is a trivia game. Well, everything's all sorts of crooked, isn't it? There we go. Let's try that a little better. Um, it is a trivia game in which you are trying to um, 
answer questions of different categories and score as many points as you can. In the official game, uh, you are trying to get more points than your opponents and actually reach the end of this track before uh, they do. In our version of the game, we're going to attempt to get Crystal to 15 points. Last time we played this, Crystal Med managed to get to 12 points. Great job. But you were too good at the game, so we're going to play advanced version. Oh no! Now I'm gonna know nothing. Probably. Yes. So we're gonna we're going to try. It's the webcam that's crooked. There we go. That's a little better. Um, and you might want to tilt it up just a little bit. I think. I want you to be able to see. The only issue is um is that our graphics are here in the way and. Yeah. There we go. That's fine. That should work. Um, so in you're gonna get two rounds of the game in order to attempt to get these 15 points. So each round of the game, I'm going to pull four topics, and you will have to place them in these one, two, three, four positions to say which one will be worth one point, which will be worth two points, three points, and four points. So I've pulled three and a fourth one. Now you also... We'll talk about those in just a second. You also have three help tiles. Uh, in the real Bezer Wizard game, this is allows you to jump in on other people's uh, questions and answer before them, or when when somebody else gets something wrong. For our version, these are two help tiles from the chat. If you if you use the Bezer Wizard tile, uh, you will get to uh, look at the chat. Until you okay. use one of those, you can't look at the chat, Crystal. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and hide it now, then. Yep, chat, please uh, feel free to discuss the questions. Crystal won't be looking at that until uh, we... Um, uh, looks like we're getting a lovely YouTube error. I think... I think <laughs> my dog okay. is drinking water off from the bowl in my <laughs> office right now, so if you hear a weird noise... I, I, I get, it's can lovely. Can you hear that? It's lovely. Uh... <laughs> So if you use your Bezer Wizard tile, you can look at the chat. Uh, and if you play the Zwap tile, Z-W-A-P, um, then you can take one of the, the categories that I pulled from the bag and swap it out for something. So, your categories for this round of the game are, Crystal. That, what is that? Technology. Technology, space travel, computers, crafts, and tools. This is language, foreign languages, foreign words, idioms, and sayings. Film, titles, actors, directors, and roles. And music, artists, composers, titles, and concepts. Which one do you want to put into the number one slot? So the one worth one point. Yep. Um, let's do the tech one. Technology for one point. Then let's do film. Film for two points. Then the music one and then language. Okay. And you don't want to swap any of these out? You're happy with these category choices? No, I think, I mean, obviously this game came out in 2008, so hard to say, but I think these are actually pretty okay categories for me, so. Yep. Okay. Well, then we'll begin with the technology question. Which modern domestic appliance uses electromagnetic induction technology? Modern appliance. Which modern domestic appliance uses electromagnetic induction technology? Induction? Electromagnetic induction? <laughs> Household appliance. Um, I honestly don't know, but I don't want to use a chat help on a one pointer. So I'm just going to say a washing machine. Uh, that is incorrect. Gator Dave in the chat got it correct. It is a uh, induction cooker, which I had oh. never heard of before. So no yeah, points. Yeah, I have a feeling maybe that was a, a like a, a fad or something that maybe <laughs> isn't as I guess an induction cooktop like or some 
Yeah, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. What else? But I didn't I didn't know that one. So film. In The Music Man, which female character fell for Professor Harold Hill? Oh no, I should know her name. If I could sing 76 trombones or <laughs> <laughs> with that Oh gosh, what is her name? Come on, come on. She's a teacher. Ah, oh, I don't remember her name. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna. I can picture like multiple actresses who have played this role. I don't know it. I don't know it. I'm just gonna say uh, it starts with an M. Does something start with an M? Maybe that's just because I'm thinking Music Man. I don't know. I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. Okay. Uh, the answer is Marion the Librarian. Dang it, it is a damn name! <laughs> so no points She's... there. You have lost, uh, uh, so you have a total of 20 points available to you oh, in the two rounds, and you've lost three of them so far. So this is a <gasps> must-get question for music. And the question okay. is... Chumbawamba gets knocked down, but they get up again in what 1997 hit single? Top Thumping! That... <laughs> I right. know Chumbawamba! <laughs> One, two, three points! I could probably sing this entire song if, you, if we had time, but clearly we don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and, and, and quick note, uh, we have sung that in karaoke. We have been there together singing that. Yep. True okay. story. So, last but not least, the four-point question for language. In military lingo, what does the acronym AWOL or AWOL mean? Uh, I know what FUBAR is. <laughs> I don't actually know what, I mean, I know what AWOL means. I, I will note that I did not have this cor exactly correct. This was, I, I, I was missing something in this one. Oh man. Okay. Well, I'm going to use a help with it from the chat. Cause I don't, I don't know it. Okay. Uh, so we're going to use one of your Bezer wizard tiles. You can take a look yep. at the chat. Uh, okay. I'm seeing there's one answer I think about this. Oh, um, it's, Everybody's saying absent without leave, which would mean two letters came from a single word, which is not. Make sure you look oh, at somebody... all of the answers. Absent without official leave. There, that would be four. Okay. Absent without official leave is going to be my answer. Yeah. Uh, chat, did you write? Because that is exactly correct. Uh, absent without awesome. official leave is the four points. So one, two, three, four. Good, good, good end to that round. We're going to take those two, or those four tiles away. So you have one more round to go. Hopefully these will be great, great categories for you. Otherwise you do have that Zwap tile, you can get rid of something. One, two, three, and four. And I guess I'll hold this in my hand in case you decide to swap. This one is... I believe this is politics. Where'd you go? Come on. It's the one with the X. Yes, this is politics. This is design. Fashion, furniture, interiors, household design, logos, and symbols. This one, communities, legislation, education, labor market, institutions, and associations. And last but not least, food and drink. It's about food and ah. drink. Let's swap the heck out of politics, please. We're going to swap <laughs> the politics question. So now I want to ask you the, the politics question just for the okay. heck of it. What president okay, okay. was related either by blood or marriage to 11 other presidents? FDR, LBJ, or JFK? Oh, well, first off, it would have been a complete guess on my part, but at least multiple choice. I'll just say JFK. Nope, that was wrong. It was FDR. Okay. So good yeah, choice. No <laughs> Instead, you get television. Ooh, that's better for me. Yeah, TV and radio. Okay, let's do... T 
TV first, or sorry, uh, on the four spot. So uh, I'm doing. Four. Okay. Yeah, then food and drink below that. Food and drink for three? Then design and then communities. Sounds good. Okay, so you are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points away from victory. Here we go. For oh, gosh. one point. Although America declared its independence in 1776, this document was not approved until 1787. I mean... Although America you... declared its independence in 1776, this document was not approved until 1787. So here's what's interesting is the words declared their independence is in the question. So is it the Declaration of Independence? Because that seems like the obvious answer. But like, for the record, I'm bad with history. <laughs> uh, why, why didn't the musical Hamilton prepare me for this? Because <laughs> that's what this is leading me toward. But now, like, my brain is like, that's too obvious. It's clearly something else. Like, it, what about the Constitution, for instance? I don't know when that was written at all. I know I should probably know that. Uh, it's only one point. It won't really matter. I'm going to... Oh, it could matter. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you only have two points to give up. Yeah. I'm going to say the Declaration of Independence. You you were right on the other side. It is the U.S. Constitution. <sighs> so that makes more sense. But like, ugh, darn it. <laughs> chat chat was pretty solidly getting it right. So you, you I'm might... sure they were. Yeah. Everyone is better at history than me, and I'm not ashamed. You still have one help tile left. Moving on to the design question for two points. I have you, to get them all. You right. have to get them all right from here on out. Oh no. When Subaru developed its iconic automotive logo. How many stars did they put on it? Oh, no. I don't know how many stars are in the Subaru logo. Okay. <laughs> this... Here's what we're going to do, Eric. We're going to come back to this question. Oh. Because, well, anything I throw out at this point would be a pure guess, and I don't want to lose the game yet <laughs> i see so let's let's we, we, I, i'm not gonna look at the chat we're just gonna come back to this one <laughs> i see well i think uh, i have a better shot at the other questions and we'll let it hang on this one for now it's not quite the way the rules say but okay i'll i'll well, allow it it also doesn't have an arbitrary point goal in the real <laughs> rules fine we'll put that on pause for a moment okay moving on to food and wine or food and drink what kind of vegetable is bok choy? What kind of vegetable? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many kinds of vegetables are there? Well, at least one. Like, the only thing that comes to mind, this is not my official answer yet, the only thing that comes to mind for me is a root vegetable which means the type of vegetables that, like, grow underground, I believe. Leafy greens would be another type, maybe? I don't know. What other types are there? Uh, like, a, there's the, the stuff like tomatoes that is... Oh, no, that's a fruit, though. So, like, deceptive vegetables. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to say root vegetable. Uh, root vegetable is is not correct. It is a ah! it is a Chinese cabbage. I was literally never going to get that. <laughs> okay. What? Chinese, Chinese cabbage. cabbage. Um. All right. So, do you want to take a stab at the uh, the Subaru question? Do you want to use a sure. tile on the Subaru question? No, I don't want to use a tile on that one. I'm gonna. Well, actually, TV and radio is pretty good for me. Yeah, we'll use the tile and we'll go to the chat, okay. I guess, you'll, for you'll the You'll probably Subaru. have to scroll up because there's a lot of people saying cabbage right now. How do people know that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, somebody in the chat said, I don't remember the logo having stars. <laughs> so... <laughs> 
Yep. Um, there are a few guesses of more guesses of five than anything else. I think I was leaning toward like four ish. So five sounds good to me. That's what we'll guess. Five sounds good. Six was correct, however. Oh, OK. There well, now I feel stars. better. All right. So let's finish strong. The alternate victory condition. Get the television question right. And you're, you're all set. So OK, sure. What funny man turned to wrestling women in comedy skits, claiming he was the intergender champion? Andy Kaufman. Andy. I know this one. Andy Kaufman is correct. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Jim Carrey biopic. <laughs> so, one, two, three, four. Uh, you, you had 11 points to finish the game. So, even right. on our, our It's old not a win. That's game, okay. But but it's still a, a good fun game and thank you chat for participating because um you were uh, you were on point for many of those yeah <laughs> team on in the chat said crystal rumor has it some people cook <laughs> well I do not cook a lot of vegetables so, <laughs> <laughs> so um. You know, that, that game did have victory conditions. My rant uh, game did not have uh, victory conditions. So in, in our discussion of what we wanted to talk about today, um, we, we wanted to talk about ways to win a game. What what are uh, the different victory conditions? What are our favorite victory conditions in the games we play? And I... Okay, so when you suggested this topic, I... Honestly, I was like, okay, yeah, that seems fine, but like didn't think anything of it. And then I started really dwelling on it. And a lot of the games that I have strong, positive, emotional feelings for have unique win conditions. And sim like similarly, some of the most epic moments that I've had in games have been as a result of games that have unique or like not point based win conditions, basically. For me, while there are a lot of Euro games that I have come to like and appreciate, games with pure victory points in them are not a draw for me. For me, I want something okay. that's not just pure victory points. Uh, I, I think, I mean, there is just like the standard point total. Something triggers the end of the game, a set number of rounds, and you total up points and, and see who wins. Um, I sort of like at least a twist on that, um, more of the race concept, where you may have that final scoring, but it's caused by someone reaching a threshold of some sort, by someone uh, putting their 12th building on the board or, or reaching a certain number of points. But I think I even like the full race concept, where whoever reaches that endpoint wins the game. Um, Merchant of Venus, my favorite game, is a race game. Whoever gets to the total at the end of the game wins. Um, but I also sort of like occasionally the surprise of whoever gets to this threshold, then we have some extra scoring at the end, and maybe there will be a surprise and find out who wins. But I like that agency of we're getting closer, we're getting to the end of things, and, and maybe there's a push, maybe there's a stall, maybe there's a last minute, you know, amazing move that'll get you over that threshold. That's the sort of victory condition I like. And I think for me, I don't dislike those types of games, but I've had more frustrating moments in those types of games. If, if a game, and for the record, I know that balance in a game is a very... Even if it was designed intentionally, it's a very subjective experience for most board gamers. Like when we say a game is balanced, we don't actually know that from the number <laughs> of plays we've played of it. But I like when a game feels balanced to me in that even if somebody kind of has a lead, the scores stay within a certain range of one another for certain players. Because I have had frustrating moments in games, especially race type games, where someone, whether that's me or someone else, has fallen so far behind that they kind of lose the excitement of playing the game. Even if winning isn't yeah. the ultimate goal or you're okay not winning, knowing that it's impossible basically at a certain point can be a bit of a bummer. Yeah, I, I, I see exactly what you mean. Um, and that's when it's nice to have some sort of catch-up mechanism uh, that, that makes it like a wavelength, one of the, the great games of the last year or so. 
has a catch-up mechanic, even for a um, a, a game that's only to 10 points. It's a light party game. Um, but if you are that far behind, if you get, what is it, the best answer, the, the four-point answer, and you are still behind after you score your four points, you get to go again, which is kind of cool. And, and a that motivation really cool. to still try your best at the end of the game, even if you're only one point or if the other team is one point away from winning. And that's what's what's really neat about that catch-up mechanism specifically is it doesn't gift you extra points. It just gives you the opportunity to earn more. So you've earned the four points that you would have gotten naturally, and now you're, they're just going to give you another opportunity, but it doesn't right. guarantee anything. Yeah. Yeah, you're still in the game, basically. You don't have to hand it over to the other team who's likely going to score that one point. You can sort of keep control and try and catch up. For sure. Uh, what other I, stuff? Yeah, so I when I was writing out my notes for this, I actually grouped games into specific categories um, okay. based on the types of win conditions that they have and games that I like that fall into those categories. So I'll go okay. through the categories really quick first. Sounds good. So these tend to be games, types of games that I like based on the way that their win condition works. Um, so asymmetric games or one versus many games. I kind of grouped those together. Um, so those are games where there are different win conditions for different players, yep. like entirely different goals. Um, so games like Rex, Vast, Root, Villainous, um, and then things like Specter Ops. Or even Dead of Winter, uh, bang the dice game, bang the regular game, yep. all that stuff fits in this category for me, where people are trying to achieve different things. Right. I like that because I think sometimes it makes it harder to tell who's in the lead in certain ways. Like there is no, oh, well, Bob's in first place. It's, okay, well, you're doing good on that, but they're also doing good on this other thing. But since you're not working toward the same stuff, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't know. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, I also like games that have multiple win conditions. Stuff like Seven Wonders Duel or Inish, where there are multiple paths to victory. So even if you're seeing one person doing that thing, oh, well, I don't think I can catch them if I start doing that too. But if I do this other thing, I still have a chance. Yeah, yeah. Um, I especially like, I like the it. ones where going for the alternate may actually short circuit the main way of winning. Uh, like maybe you end, you end the game faster and win that way, uh, which is even more of a surprise when, when you're able to pull that off. Yeah, and I think it's neat because... You can, yeah, you can, the, the surprise of certain win conditions is kind of fun to pull, like, oh, so you, I know you were thinking that you were two turns away from winning with that, but um, I, I just got my, you know, fourth whatever here, and I, I actually win. Like, that's a cheeky little moment. Yes. Um, I like games where your win condition can change mid-game. With a caveat, I do recognize that sometimes this can be a very frustrating thing for me and for other people, but games like Battlestar Galactica, yep. where you were human and now you're Cylon, yep. or Mansions of Madness, where, oh no, you've gone insane and now you have potentially a new win condition. In these types of games, those changes, if they're implemented correctly... I think add to the theme of those games and make them feel more thematic. And therefore I like them, even though they can cause very frustrating moments when you've worked towards something for a long time and now, oh gosh, that's all out the window. I got to do something else now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, flux comes to mind, um, which you may be working toward a particular goal card in your hand and make the move to play it and then something happens to prevent all of that from happening, and and now suddenly your game is just shot. Yeah. Yeah. Flux is one of those games that I know a lot of people like to hate on a little bit. And I will admit, I haven't played it in a long time. But I think the themed sets can be fun with the right groups of people. So I know that you are also a Flux stan. <laughs> as it were. <laughs> so, I, uh, yeah, I'm the you... official Flux reviewer, so... Yep. Yep. Um, okay, so then another category is... Well, this one, this one I don't have a lot of examples for, but games that have a twist on the typical whoever has the most of X thing wins. So 
all of these games are really similar in how their win conditions work, but things like modern art, QE, or high society, where in all of those games, you want to have the most of something, but if you have too much or too little of this other thing, you've disqualified yourself from winning. So yeah. that twist on the typical is kind of neat. Yep. Uh, and then the last one, just games with flat out unique win conditions. Uh, Fog of Love, where you're just trying to fulfill your personal destiny. Yep. Or I'm going to get hate in the chat for this one, but I wanted to mention it because it is a childhood favorite of mine. Mousetrap. Okay. I get that most children just put together the the uh, Rube Goldberg machine yep. of Mousetrap and just did it. I actually played the game and earned the pieces. And come on, tell me, as far as a child is concerned, that there isn't a cooler victory condition in getting to set off that Rube Goldberg machine when it's finally completed. It's, That's yeah, awesome. it's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. My kids actually played um, Mousetrap at Dice Tower Con one year, the one year I took both kids, and they immediately asked for Mousetrap, and they play it correctly every time it comes out. So I loved cool. it when I was a kid, and honestly, I in like when I started thinking about designing games, which is really not like something that's at the front of my mind most of the time, but it's always kind of in the back of my mind. I've been like, how would you design? a Rube Goldberg game for adults. Like, how would that work? Like, I in my yeah. head, I'm designing this impossible game where there are multiple pieces that could be constructed together in different orientations and layouts. And, like, I, I think it would be really neat and also nearly impossible to design well. Yeah, so therefore, there's... Yeah, it stays there's in the back a couple. Uh, I know there was one that was, like, creative ways to kill someone. It was, like, a cartoony death machine. Um, I don't remember the title. And then there was another one called Marvin Marvel's Marvelous Marble Machine that was all about, you, you had a marble moving around a hex grid and you could get bumpers and devices to shoot it in a different direction and you were trying to get it to go into your side of the board. It was a little Rube goldberg -y. Okay. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, I wanted to mention it because it's a unique win condition, technically. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> So a couple that you didn't mention, player elimination. Knock oh. out everybody else on the board and you win. So Risk, Monopoly, uh, not not as many modern games use this, but it strike. does exist. Str strike, there you go. <laughs> um, my, and that's my favorite player elimination game. Tug of War, which is uh, you know kind of a, a similar scoring. It's basically when I gain a point, you lose a point. But it's a much mm. more of a visceral push pull and if you get to the end then you you win and co-ops which have the unique victory conditions of beating the game but they sort of you know they, they don't usually fall under the same rules because it's more like achieve this goal and you win the game right uh someone in the chat asked if i have played forbidden sky and i haven't um, I have played Forbidden Island and Forbidden Desert, and the sentiment after Forbidden Sky came out from some people seemed to be that it was okay, it was fine. Um, so I, while I am interested in trying it at some point, it hasn't been like something I've been actively seeking out. But um, if somebody in the chat thinks that I would like it, let me know, because, you know, there's a lot of games to play, and unless I have a specific motivation to play one, it's usually not going to get played. <laughs> It's it's funny you bring that up because Forbidden Sky hit the table for us in the summer household this week. Uh, oh, nice! It, it was uh, my my youngest turn to pick the game for family game night, and he said, "Let I want to try Forbidden Sky," and so it we we got it out. We did not win. Forbidden Sky is a difficult game because not only do you have to play the system and the timing of everything, there's also a physical component. You're making a circuit. Uh, in order to launch a rocket. And it's these physical components. That you have to place nodes and connect those nodes to each other. And if you don't keep your, your system clustered close enough, you're going to get in trouble uh, because the components only reach so far. So if I have... If I have a node and I need to connect another node somewhere close to it and I don't create that node on the board close enough to this current node, no, there will be no way for me to make the connection I need. 
Um, and you can actually get your, you can build yourself into a corner basically where you can no longer finish the, the circuit, um, which is, is tricky. Um, of course, by then you probably lose in some other way. You blow off the tower or whatever, uh, get electrocuted. That's fun. <laughs> it's it's a hard game and and I think more fiddly and difficult than the other forbidden games uh can be. I again don't think it's a bad game, but pretty much what you said. It's okay. Um and it has some of the best components because this rocket lights up and you you know it makes a launch sound when you actually complete it, which is cool. But it's not an easy game, especially for kids. Okay. Um, I actually got to play um, a little bit with my family that lives in Missouri um, over the past couple of weekends. Uh, the, the weekend after our most recent episode, I actually, we did a Zoom chat with my mom and my sister and my brother-in-law, and we played um, Crossed Words, which we played on the stream two weeks ago, and we played just one, and I just had them writing stuff on pieces of paper. Um, and that actually worked pretty well. And we did crossed words kind of like we did it on the stream where everybody was just writing down their answers in a grid. And then we were going through and uh, reading off everyone's answers. And then last weekend I played Jackbox games with my sister, brother-in-law, and then his whole family. So he, he, my brother-in-law's mom, dad, and two brothers. Um, we And one of their boyfriends, like a whole bunch of people. And it was really fun. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, any other victory conditions we want to talk about, or should we get to some questions from the chat? I think I've talked a lot tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but I it was I'm, all fascinating. I mean, I, I'd like to think so, but I do know that I can ramble a little bit. Truly, though, I know I talked a lot about this, this about Forgotten <laughs> Waters. It's so good. I want to play it again. I don't. I don't play big games like this solo normally i really don't i just don't and I, I i'm itching to play it again very cool uh all right so a, a couple of questions i saw go by yes this is a hot dog oh sorry baron i knocked over <laughs> this is this is baron das brot the german loaf of bread that appears on children's television late at night in germany it's really weird the children's television station goes off the air and then they just show this guy all night long over and over and over in a loop it's weird but <laughs> this is a hot dog it's an official jim henson uh actually hot dog from uh stuffed and unstrung which is the jim henson alternative improv show using puppets and this is a souvenir so anyway <laughs> that that's non-game related but someone else said uh muhammad asked there are cooperative games where if one teammate gets eliminated, the whole party loses, where in other games, the other party members can continue the game. Which do you prefer? That's tough, because if somebody else gets eliminated and that now has caused me to lose the game, that's not a good feeling. But I also don't like the feeling of, oh... Bob's eliminated, but we're just going to soldier on. Bye, Bob. Like, that doesn't feel good either. Um, I would say probably the latter, though. I would say us getting to continue, even though I don't like leaving Bob in the dust. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like some some games will have rules about how the eliminated player is still able to participate. Um, you know, they can... They're a ghost, basically, but they can still cheer the team on. Um, like in Bang, you mentioned Bang, the deputies can get killed, but as long as the sheriff wins, the deputies win because they manage to keep the good guys uh, in the game. Um, yeah. Stuff like that is kind of, you can still win and, and you can have the heroic sacrifice in order to get the team to win. So I think I like, as long as it's not too long and I, as you don't say bye, Bob, <laughs> you know, we'll finish the game without you. <laughs> Uh, I, I sort of like having that opportunity for a noble sacrifice, but I also get it's it's simpler to simply end the game when one player is eliminated. Someone in the chat says that I have to show a stuffed toy as well. <laughs> um, I yeah. don't have any stuffed toys, but hold on, I have something better. Better? I mean, if we're going to start taking toys out. Oh, you got the dog. <laughs> okay. Which dog is our guest today? <laughs> Hold on, I'm my headphones back on. Doggo. 
All right, which which dog is our guest this evening? This is Lana. Hi, Lana. If, if somebody wants to see a fluffy, adorable thing, I got Doggo. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, in Time Stories, says One Pip Wonder, you can come back into the game at a later point and join the others if you die. Oh, yeah, that, like... I actually liked that where you have to put your little piece on the time track like a few spaces down. So they play without you for like a turn or two, and then you come back in, which honestly is pretty neat. That's kind of cool. You're just like stuck in stasis for a while while your your system resets. Yeah, yeah. It, it feels really thematic. Very cool. Ah, uh, da dum dum. <laughs> None of the doggos have stuffed toys? I mean, not in my office. Uh, Sterling has some little stuffed squirrels that he loves to play with that have a little squirrel, like, tree trunk that's also a stuffed toy. Um, and those are all downstairs currently. <laughs> uh, in what way, this is a, a tough question, in what way have you grown personally in character from playing board games? That's a big question. Okay, you want down? Hold on. Okay, 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 okay. I'll go. Oh gosh! <laughs> I I think I've gotten at least I hope I have gotten a little bit better at handling my frustration in in playing games. Um, there there was a a very memorable game of Kahuna, in which I was being taught the game, and and I don't know if you played Kahuna Crystal, but there's there's uh, cascades of actions that can happen. You're building bridges between islands. This is one of the Cosmos two player games, and um, it's possible through certain actions to remove the other player's bridges. If you control an island, you put a marker down on it, and you can destroy the bridges of your opponent. And if you do that, you can often cause a cascade where by removing those bridges, you also gain control of this island, which removes those bridges. And, and it's it can get nasty. And I did not understand what I was doing and kept getting frustrated and frustrated and frustrated and get, got snippy and all that. And, and I feel like I've gotten better at handling that frustration, I hope. Um, I think Tom might disagree with me and think I, I complain too much when I'm getting frustrated. But I, I feel like I've maybe gotten more experience dealing with those situations and hopefully am, I hope, getting better at, at, uh, at handling it more maturely as I've gotten gray. I think you and I are similar in a lot of ways, but yep. in that way also. Um, but I have those moments too, where I, I start getting snippy or like kind of making like little sarcastic comments about, well, he's going to do this because he's clearly going to win kind of, you know, like those yeah. types of like, it's not necessarily a mean comment, but it's not a nice one either. I think for me, the thing that board gaming has helped me with is I've learned to stand up for myself and for other people in more meaningful ways as a result of board games, which sounds kind of weird, but I think for a lot of people, um, particularly women, um, who have experienced uh, situations which are a little bit awkward, um, being talked down to or maybe not being treated well. I think a lot of us have kind of just let that stuff roll off of our backs or tried to ignore it. And I, as a person through board gaming, have learned to stand up for myself a little bit more. Um, there was a game that I was playing uh, like a year or so ago at a convention. Um, I'm obviously not going to mention any names or anything like that, but there was a person playing with me who was making s snide and antagonistic comments uh, to only me and not to the other players in the game. The other players happened to be male. He was male as well. I'm female. Uh, and it was very clear that it was a deliberate thing. And I kind of let it go a little while. And then I I don't remember exactly what I said to him, but I didn't yell. I didn't get, like, I didn't raise my voice, but I was like, hey, you're only making those types of comments to me, not the other players. And I don't appreciate it. And I really, w I want you to stop. 
Like, I, I said the thing that I always wish I had said in those, you know, like, later you're like, oh, I should have said something. I did the thing. Yeah. And I was really proud of myself. And he did. He chilled out. Like, it's still, it, I definitely made things awkward for the whole table in that yeah. moment. But yeah. I, at that point, I was just like, no, I'm not going to allow myself to be treated this way. And obviously, that's a little thing. But I've gotten better at doing that type of thing for myself. And not just in board games, in life, as a result of board games. So sorry to kind of make it serious. <laughs> no, I feel like that's that's a good place to to end the show for tonight. I mean, that, that's that's good. It, improvement is good, and and I I feel bad ending things because I always love hanging out with you, Crystal. I look forward to this every couple weeks. I like hanging out with you too, and honestly, I like hanging out with the chat. We've. We've kind of got, you know, a bunch of regulars that show up every two weeks, and I love seeing their names show up in the chat. Yes. I love that you all join us. I love that you all remember to click the thumbs up button below the video <laughs> for me. It makes me so happy at the end of the stream when I see all the thumbs ups when I go and look at the YouTube video. It makes me really, really happy, and I hope you all are continuing to enjoy the show. We are always willing to take feedback. Please, if yeah. you have feedback about the show, you can email me or Eric, Eric at Dicetower.com, Crystal at Dicetower.com. Yep. Um, or you can, you know, hit us up on social media. We're both on Twitter, um, wherever. I'm generally posting about Animal Crossing and nothing else at this point on Twitter. <laughs> um, but we um, we love joining you all. And we hope that you will join us for our next episode, which will be in two weeks. Which, oh my gosh, that's May. Yeah. May Six. May starts are, this week. How is that possible? I, I oh yeah, I can't. Uh, May sixth. No, that's next week. That's that's two. Yeah. May thirteenth will be our next episode. 6 p.m. at nine p.m. Eastern. Indeed. I hope you all will be able to join us then. But until then, I am Crystal Pisano. I'm Eric Summerer. And you've been watching Dice Tower tonight. Thank you for watching. Promotional consideration has been provided by game publishers in the form of review copies of games. Crystal and I will see you in two weeks for another installment. Our show is supported by viewers like you. Thanks. Dice Tower Tonight is produced by Crystal and me with assistance from Tom Vassell, Mike Delisio, Roy Kennedy, and Rob Searing. Awkward Small Talk at a Percussionists Convention is brought to you by Ubongo. Timothy Pinkham composed our theme, and hosting is provided by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games at great prices at CoolStuffInc.com. Give us your feedback on the Dice Tower Guild at Board Game Geek on Facebook or Twitter, or by emailing us at Crystal at Dicetower.com or Eric at Dicetower.com. And don't forget to visit the other shows in the Dice Tower Network. Find something new at Dicetowernetwork.com. Until next time, from all of us at the Dice Tower, have, have fun, fun gaming. gaming. I didn't actually know that you put our email addresses in the outro. That's cool. <laughs> you got to you got to evolve a little bit, right? Bye chat.